وَمَنْ يَقُلْ مِنْهُمْ إِنِّي إِلَاهُمْ مِنْ دُونِ means and whomsoever or whoever يَقُلْ they say minhum from them إِنِّي إِلَاهُمْ مِنْ دُونِ that indeed I am a God <coughs> besides him him meaning Allah now if you look at the previous ayat as explained that يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ وَلَا يَشْفَعُونَ إِلَّا لِمَنِ ارْتَضَى وَهُمْ مِنْ خَشْيَتِهِ مُشْفِقُونَ Who is Allah referring to in this ayah? The angels. بَلْ عِبَادُ مُكْرَمُونَ Rather they are honored slaves. It's in the previous page. وَلَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ Those who are with him, referring to the angels, they are not too arrogant or too haughty to worship him. And over here, we know that they do not have free will. But for argument's sake, if they did, then Allah is saying, وَمَنْ يَقُلْ مِنْهُمْ إِنِّي إِلَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِ That even if any of them had to then go and say that I am God with Allah, فَذَلِكَ نَجَزِيهِ جَهَنَّمْ Then that we would recompense them with Jahannam. كَذَلِكَ نَجَزِ الظَّالِمِينَ And just like that, we recompense every single wrong doer. And so as we understand, as for the angels and the idea here is that human beings should try and be like angels. You know, they are in a sense of awe when it comes to Allah. And they are in a state of shafaq, mushfiqun. They are in a state of shafaq. They are afraid of the punishments of Allah. Khashiyah is a sense of fear that comes out of knowledge who, of who Allah is. This refers to Tawheed al-Rububiyyah and Asma wa Sifat. The more you study the names of Allah and also the Quran, the ayat of that explains who Allah is, the more your sense of khashiyah grows. Only those whom Allah has given knowledge to actually fear Him. As for the rest, majority of them, they don't fear Allah. <clears throat> because to fear Allah you need ilm. Again, the, you know, the importance of seeking knowledge. The importance of seeking knowledge. The more we seek knowledge, the more our sense of khashiyah is supposed to increase. Khashiyah, it becomes a barrier between us and committing sins. So they, the angels, and a sense of khashiyah and shafaq when it comes to Allah. So for them to even think about saying that I am God with Allah, it's out of the question because of their sense of fear, number one. Also, they haven't been given the ability to do so because they do not have free will like human beings. But for argument's sake, for these, you know, the, those out there, the Quraysh, and even the people today who claim that the angels can be of any help to them, or that the angels, you know, they can be worshipped in any way, shape, manner, or form. The Quraysh, they claim that the angels were the daughters of Allah. Right. Allah is saying, yeah, if any of them had to say or claim that they are ilah with Allah, then into Jahannam they would go. And just like that, we repay all of the wrongdoers, those who commit dhulm. In this case, major dhulm refers, number one, to shirk. And there's also dhulm against oneself. That's different. What is dhulm against one's, one's own self? I want to take a guess, inshallah. Committing sins. Correct. When Adam and his wife Hawa, may peace be upon them both, when they were sent down to earth, the dua they made, what was it? Rabbana dhulamna anfusana. We have wronged our own selves. So you can commit dhulm against your own selves by committing sins or dhulm against creation by taking away their rights. So everyone who says this, this is a conditional sentence. And the condition stated does not necessarily have to take place also. So he's not just referring now to the angels, but rather any person who claims to be a god with Allah, then they would be punished the same way. كَذَلِكَ نَجِزِ الظَّالِمِينَ What is that? فَذَلِكَ نَجِزِيهِ جَهَنَّمْ they will be put in Jahannam. In another place, Allah says, in ashrakta amaluk." That if you commit shirk, then Allah will make all of your deeds turn to dust. All of the deeds would turn to dust. Everything would be in vain. That is in Surah Zumar. And then these people would be of the losers. And so we have many in history, how many people have tried to play Allah? Fir'aun would be one example. What happened to Fir'aun? فَذَلِكَ نَجَزِيهِ جَهَنَّمْ As we know, Allah explains in the Qur'an that Fir'aun and his people, they are shown their place in Jahannam every morning and evening. 
in preparation so they know where they're going. Imagine you are about to go through severe torture. Mm -hmm. You're tied up on a chair maybe. And the person who's about to torture you, he just keeps showing you the tool that he's going to use. I'm like, you know, tomorrow I'm going to use this tool. Just com continue looking at this tool. And just imagine all the ways I'm going to hurt you with it. <laughs> and this is what happens to Fir'aun and his people every morning, every evening. And why is that? فَقَالَ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى He said. Fir'aun turned to his people and said, I am your Lord the Most High. فَذَلِكَ نَجْزِيهِ جَهَنَّمُ And so he, into Jahannam he will go. What about after that? What about people today? How many people today want to play God? If you look at the world today, they've tried to make secularism into God, right? La ilaha illallah. If you look at it today, they claim that money is the new religion. Who's heard of that statement before? We've heard Muslims say this, and these are words of kufr. These are words of kufr. May Allah protect us. Football? Oh, I've never heard that one. Who said that? The simple thing is, if you want to know what really and truly you have taken as an ilah in your heart, and again, if you look at the deeper linguistic meaning of ilah, it's not just one that you worship, but one that you are unconditionally loyal to, the one that you demonstrate wala to, wala being one of the highest forms of love and obedience and dedication. <coughs> then just look at what you do at night. When you have nothing to do, you have spare time, you're not sleeping, what is it that you like to do? Watch TV, entertain yourselves. It's a sign that you could have ended up taking lahu as your ilah. Some people, they will literally watch TV all night. They will play games all night. They will just scroll on YouTube all night. And then they are oversleeping fajr. Just look at what you like to do at night. Then you'll know where your heart is turned. Allah oh, grant us all a good understanding. And there are those who, even if they have to go to work, anything like that, it will not stop them. They get up at night. There are two opinions regarding this. One of them is that it's the time between Maghrib and Isha. Another is in the last third of the night, which is the time of the Hajjid, when Allah descends to the first heaven. So no matter what happens, these people, it doesn't stop them. So whoever gets up at night, and they say, La ilaha illallah wahdu la sharika la. Then they say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. And then they say, Wala hawla wala quwata illa billah. All of it just once. And then they say, Rabbi khfirli, O Allah forgive me. They will be forgiven. And whatever dua they make, it will be responded to. Whatever they ask, it will be given. And if they get up and they make wudu, and they pray two rakah, it will be accepted from them. Subhanallah. The chances of us saying this when we wake up at night though, how much training do you have to go through? It's, it's a deep thing, think about it. You've had a long sleep, you just woke up. What's the chances of you saying this first thing? First thing when you wake up, La ilaha illallah. What's the chances? Your mind is not there yet, you're still half asleep. Your brain is still lying down on your pillow whilst you've actually gotten up also. You're not thinking. What's the chances of you saying that? Who can take a guess? It's quite low, right? So you can understand how, how significant it is that the one who manages, he trains himself to do this, to say this. The moment he wakes up at night, not during the day, but at night. Man ta'arra min al layl at night. Acceptance. Isn't the whole world, you know, every single Muslim, we come to the masjid every single day. Some of us, we've only been guided to obedience. But when we come to the masjid, we're harming people. We're, we're not straightening the roads. We're not filling the gaps. We're not smelling good. And so then, the doors of acceptance closes. So how many people have been guided to obedience, but they haven't been given acceptance? The one I have explained, if Allah accepts just one deed in your entire life, He will use that to forgive you and put you into Jannah. Nobody knows whether their deeds have been accepted or not. But here is an open invitation. The Nabi of Allah وسلم, he said, you do this, guaranteed acceptance. Imagine you do this just once in your life. May Allah grant us all the ability to do so.